Hey, hey, hey. Happy Saturday, everybody. Let me just make sure I'm good right here. Give me one sec. Put some volume right here. All right. Sounds like I'm good to go. Let me lower it here. All right. Happy April. April Fool's Day today. Okay. Bam, bam. Just make sure I'm good here. Bam. Got the computer. It's good to go. Good old faithful right here. All right. And let me give you a quick, quick preview of what we're going to do today. This is going to be the final uh, design that we're going to stitch out today. All right. So that's on a hat. This is a 110 flex fit, 110, actually a 6227, the fitted one. All right. And guess what size this is? If you were to guess. All right. It's a pretty good size up here. So just a little preview of what we're going to work on today. All right, we're going to get into the details of one of the biggest um, challenges. I'll say, uh, yeah, one of the biggest challenges that I see every week. Uh, guarantee, guarantee that if you're in any, no matter which embroidery group you're in, Okay, one of the number one issues that you're always going to see is uh, designs not lining up, losing registration. Uh, you'll see where it works on one piece of garment, but then you switch it up and you go to something else and everything pretty much, right, like something crazy happens with the design. And then we get all sorts of crazy stuff happening. All right. Oh. All right. Just making sure I'm good here. All right. I do have a question of the day. Uh, what is your busiest month of the year? And I'll share you. I'll share mine right now in a bit. And I think um, just business, especially in embroidery, it's kind of like I like to compare it to. Um, I like to compare it to like sports, right? Sports. Before you start the big season, what do you have? You have preseason, right? And then what do you do during preseason, right? That's where you start working on stuff, right? You start working on a new game plan. You start testing new players and new plays and that new shot that you have, right? You don't want to test a new shot during the finals, right? Where you haven't really worked on it and... You really want to do it during the preseason. Okay. Uh, I think if you know what is your busiest month, that's not the time to start testing, right? Sometimes you have no other choice but to experiment during um, busy season. But I know for us, all right, so to answer um, my question for today, uh, my busiest month, I would say, is October, November. It's like in between that borderline. From like October 15 to November 15 and kind of bleeding into um, uh, Black Friday in November. All right. From there, it's like total chaos. So if we were to try to if we were to try to experiment or test out a new product or test out a new design feature. Right. It's probably the worst time to do it because at that point. Right. Whatever your busiest month is. Right. At that point, you got to be like automatic. OK, you got to be straight clockwork and just working that. Right. So right now. OK. Right now, I would say. Um, uh, January, we're kind of bleeding off uh, the, the, the holiday season. Right. We're kind of wrapping. We, we, we actually still get orders January. All right. From the December area. But once we hit February, March, April, okay, that is straight testing. So that's what I've been doing a lot right now is just testing. Um, because in embroidery, it's like we we all have our settings. We all have, you know, uh, our recipes, 
right? Which they're called is like, hey, what should I, what density should I use here? What underlay should I use here? And we have generic recipes, but sometimes you want to venture off from the recipes, okay? Because you might find uh, better efficiencies, better stuff getting stitched out on certain projects. All right, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today is um, playing that what if game. What if we do this? What if we do that? Okay, because you can always make a design better. Uh, a lot of times we have our go-to designs that we know that they're good and we don't want to touch anything about it. But sometimes we can make it better or sometimes we actually have to play with it or we have to make adjustments because we change garments. So we went from garment to garment and now something's not lining up. Okay, so today's uh, today's um, episode, today's live show, I want to keep it very subtle. All right, where well, we're talking about a fill stitch connecting with a satin stitch. And once again, if you just joined, uh, this is our final, this is what our final product's going to look like. Okay, so pretty good, big design. All right, so today, FAU plays, right, San Diego. That's that's kind of like my, uh, let's see if I, oops. Oops, man, look at that. Doesn't that look good right there? All right, we turn that to this. All right, so that's our final here. And then that's our product here, all right? Just kind of like a preview of what we're going to see. All right, here it's lining up, but you're going to see where it didn't actually line up from the beginning. All right, so I'm going to kind of show you um, what happens in different types of situations. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jess, Jesse, West Virginia, Cyclone, Val, PA, Therabri. Good morning. Good morning, Damps from Florida. All right, all right, all right, bam, bam. Therabri, testing phase now. Testing and learning, yep. Sometimes uh, I know when I'm testing, I'll do subtle changes. Like I won't do, and I'll do like one change at a time. And you're pretty much like in a laboratory because you're trying to see like, okay, what if I do this? What happens? And then whatever you have, I know I have notebooks, right? Uh, filled with notes and I'm writing down notes because I'll forget, right? You're like, you'll do something on one time and then... Two, three years later, you'll be like, oh, man, I remember I did something like I like to uh, write down notes and just go back and see which notes I kind of took down. All right. All right. TMG in the house. All right. DJ Kev from North Carolina. Mrs. Karen. Good morning from Maryland. All right. All right. Man. So let's see. Let me switch my location right here all right oh wait actually before we go there let me just do some quick um let me do some quick uh uh information put out some quick information all right so happy april right what is it it's i got my calendar right here we are on day 91 right of the year so this year is already flying by. It's going by quick. All right. I do have a jam-packed April. Um, so this is my last month here in Virginia. Um, next live, I'll be back in Illinois. So I'll be back with my family. All right. I'll be back in Illinois, and I'll be back at the shop. And that'll be the last day that I'm at the shop. Okay. So after I do that live, so during that live, I'm actually going to have the embroidery machines with me. So we'll do some live embroidery. Okay. So it is going to be a very good one next month also. And right after that live show, I'm going to break everything down. We're going to pack up and then we're going to move to San Diego. All right. So it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. Like these next, uh, it's already been crazy this year, but it's going to be even more crazier, uh, especially with packing up, packing all the equipment at the shop and then taking it over to uh, San Diego. So after that live, pack everything up and I'm definitely going to document the whole move, uh, breaking down all the equipment. All right. This is actually 
the second time I've had to break down equipment and take it to a new state, right? Cross country. Cause I was in Florida before I was in um, Illinois. All right. I pretty much, I've lived cross country uh, for the longest. All right. So uh, moving and doing all that stuff, even though it's a headache, it's like clockwork to me now. I already know how to break everything down and move quick. All right. So look out for a lot of good content, a lot of good information coming out, a lot of testing. So I'm going to be, I'm going to say I'm going to be testing all the way, testing, uh, experimenting with fabric, um, threads, needles, backing. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to, I'm going to be in testing phase all the way to August and then come August, September, October. That's when we start um, focusing on uh, um, prime season. All right. It's like our uh, our Super Bowl of uh, embroidery for us. OK, is October, November, December. That's like our big month. But we actually start like in August, putting everything ready to go. All right. Just kind of like an FYI. And then next live is going to actually be on the 29th. All right. So make a note of that. Uh, it was every first Saturday of the month, but the first Saturday of next month of May, uh, I'll be on the road. So make a note next live on April 29th. All right. So super jam packed um, month, April. All right. I like April. All right. It's like a transition from being super cold and, you know, weather being all crazy to. Uh, being a little better and getting ready for uh, summertime. All right. Um, all right, all right. Uh, let's go and get into the digitizing portion. All right. Um, so today, what I want to do, let me show you one more time here. Um, we're going to go, we're going to eventually end up here. All right, but I want I do want to take it in, into baby steps and show you how to get to this location. All right, because registration with hats, uh, you probably already familiar that uh, it can be a headache because hats want to have a mind of their own and they want to start pushing and pulling in awkward uh, locations. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start here. Um, I'm starting with this font. I found this font this this week here that I really like. All right, let's go with, let's just put FAU, or actually let's do SDSU. So today, San Diego State plays uh, FAU, uh, Florida Atlantic. All right, so to go to the, to the championship in uh, college basketball for the men's. All right, last night it was uh, the women's basketball played and it was pretty crazy. So we got LSU versus um, Iowa in the finals for the women. So good week right now for basketball, all right, both college and NBA. Lakers, right, going to make it to the playoffs. So it's, it's, it's like a good time right now in basketball, all right. But that's kind of off topic. Here, usually we use college, text. Okay, let me see if you could see this good. Yeah, we're good right there. All right, usually for collegiate uh, – for something bold, you use college, but I wanted something different, something to kind of stand out from, you know, your everyday type of fonts. So I do have a true type font here. Uh, let's find this. It is this one, Sports World. And I found this on uh, the font. Okay, the font. And let's go 15 millimeters. Actually, let me switch this to inches and we're going to go super big. All right. We're going to go super big. We're going to go. Actually, let's start at one inch and then we'll 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 gradually gradually move it up as we're going along. All right. And if you have any questions, put a Q right next to it. But uh, I'm going to kind of zone out and stay with the software right now. Okay, right now I just changed the height to one inch and we'll just keep everything just normal. We won't get, go too crazy. All right, create text. All right, hold on, what happened? Man, create text. 
uh, use mouse bar. All right, there we go. Bam. All right, close this. Sorry, get a little closer. All right, so right now, all right, it. Uh, so anytime you're working with true type, uh, true type fonts, um, the software it's gonna auto digitize this stuff, right? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right now we're super big, so it probably won't look all good. Okay, you might want to go a little smaller if you're gonna use sand stitches. All right, but what we want to do right now, you can see how it's broken into. You can see how it's broken into uh, pieces. So let's go change the color so you can see a little better. So if you see it here, if we take out this, you can see how it's uh, the true type did its best uh, its best uh, rendering to cut up our pieces into shapes. All right, so we get that. All right, but what we want to do, we just want all our letters to be one piece. All right um so select this and what i'm gonna do i just want to make an outline to surround our design all right wilcom makes this part easy i'm just gonna do a full uh no spacing just a run stitch to go around um just sharp corners right there all right let it think for a second and right here uh, a lot of popular software they have the outline or the offset Okay, so here, now if we hide this, the original hide, okay, you can see how it, and this method, uh, very useful also if you're doing like applique work. So you could use this method also for applique, but what I wanna do, I wanna, I wanna have a fill stitch inside, all right? But same, same, same um, concept as applique. So if you were to do applique, uh, it's actually less headaches if you're doing applique because uh, you don't really have to worry about the push pull of the fill stitches inside. All right. Actually, let me unhide this. And you could, if if you could make it into uh, to Tommy stitches. All right. But I'm gonna delete this. Keep it like this. And let's size it up right now. So let me see. Uh, for I want to make this five inches, five inches wide. All right, five inches wide. I want that to be super big on the hat. All right, bam! Look at that. And it's a height of one point two. So at its regular ratio, at its proper ratio. Okay, at five inches, we're at 1.2. Now, what I like about here, I'll make let me bring myself up a bit right here. Uh, now, what I what I like about um, these collegiate fonts, okay, they're not they're not so sensitive with taking them out of ratio. A lot of a lot of uh, fonts, if you take them out of ratio uh like the font looks totally like all oh, distorted it won't work okay but with these block type fonts you have a little bit more wiggle room all right uh we are getting questions here let me bam oh all right good morning good morning good morning all right val dawson it's good seeing you at oh yeah 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 nice seeing everybody uh, met a lot of people last week at the uh, impressions show, right? Uh, some of you saw the video that I posted and it was crazy seeing all the machines, right? Being, it's just, it's just, uh, information overload for those who went to the, to the impression show, uh, last weekend for me, it's just information overload because it's, it's just crazy seeing so much stuff. Uh, or if you went to the long Beach one earlier this year. All right, there is another one in September. It's in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So if you're in that area, I highly recommend you to go to uh, to the Impressions Expo and just talk to uh, the the workers, not the workers, but the staff for each booth. So for each company, right? They're they're loaded with information, right? So when I was at Tajima, the ones that were there, this is this goes for all the for all the 
different booths, but specifically for Tajima, right? You have uh, individuals that that they have their own shops, right? They run like um, hundreds of uh, of embroidery heads, and they're speaking to you in terms of a business owner, right? It's not just somebody that knows uh, the specs by 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 a brochure. Like these people actually run machines, so. It's good to actually talk to people that have ran machines and that have ran design. So that was a good thing about that. All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, hey, Aldell. All right. Uh, Jim. Good morning. From Orange County. All right. All right. What's the, uh, Liz? Good morning. What's the name of your software? This is uh, Wilcom. Uh, Wilcom 4.5. If you have Hatch, very similar, has like all the same hotkeys and everything. And I've been the past couple weeks, I've been working with uh, different software. Uh, I've definitely played with uh, Chroma. Okay, I am gonna make a video on my uh, on my review on Chroma. All right, I got. It's kind of yeah, it's different going from like you know, Wilcom down to Chroma Inspire. Right, where you're very limited, but I'll kind of talk about what's the maximum stuff you could do with Chroma. All right. Um, but it is hard to to switch softwares. But at the same time, it's easy once you understand a software. It's easy to adapt, but it's kind of hard when you're limited on, on some of the stuff. That's what I meant. All right. Um, and then this is a good question right here. Right? I'm gonna actually make a video on this one, all right? Did you not like using Chroma? I'm wondering if I should buy Wilcom. All right, Wilcom, that's what they do. Like they do embroidery. Like it, it's it's like the best, all right? Um Wilcom Hatch, right? If you want to start, I, I started with Wilcom Hatch and then I and then I moved and then I moved over to uh Wilcom Studio, and the good thing is, if you do wanna, if you do wanna convert from Hatch to uh, to Wilcom 4.5, they'll they'll credit you. So it's not like you waste money and and you know you buy Hatch for nothing. You could you could get credited, and it'll go, it'll it'll bring down the price of the Wilcom. All right. All right, we're good right here. All right. I kind of went off on a tangent right there, but let's go back right here. All right. So when I was talking about is changing uh, your designs out of ratio. Okay. Here, I'm going to change it out of ratio and you're going to see actually uh, right here because we're at a five. I want my height to be two inches. All right. So you saw how it just raised by the top. Now, a lot of these decisions that I make, it's it's not only uh, I actually stitch stuff out. So I, I I did stitch it out at its regular stitch, and it, and it looked too small, right? So I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, and that's that's part of the the testing and the analyzing phase is what is that sweet spot? Okay, what is the sweet spot that you want to go with when you're doing hats? And what I like to do, I save a lot of my samples. So if a customer is ever asking me, hey, should I go um, this size or should I go that size? I like to have hats, garments, files available so they could see it for themselves. All right. So here we have SDSU, bam. And what I want to do, I'm going to duplicate this. All right. Let me change this color right here. Let's do this white so you can kind of see it. All right, this part, I'm going to turn it into a fill stitch. All right, so on the right-hand side, you can see my fill stitch goes first, and then these run stitches that are white go second. All right, bam. And you could verify what I like to do. I like to verify that my uh, run stitches, that my outline was done correct, because sometimes when, you're, when, you, um, when you outline a file, it might add like extra nodes, like it'll put some like random like nodes like this, but I don't want any of that. 
Okay, so you can see how I have from here, from one corner to the next corner to the next corner. All right, I don't want anything in between. All right, so everything looks good, everything looks clean. So for example, here, all right, here it's kind of curving, but I don't want that curve right there. So what I do, um, will it should be a corner to corner and then turn this into a straight shift this here all right and then delete that all right all right so and and then here i gotta make a hole inside this d so i could select the main d and then the little piece of d right here and uh, a lot of softwares have this where you can remove the hole here it says exclude and if you're familiar with um, like adobe illustrator and photoshop uh, you know about the pathfinder tools so that's kind of like similar to right here so that removed the fill stitch down there and then if i push h you can see how everything is straight so i want to verify Right, that everything came out clean. And now I have a perfect trace. And theoretically, I have a perfect trace on my on my white outline right here. All right. Now, what I want to do, okay, if I'm already anticipating that I want this to be on a hat. Okay. There's a couple things that's crossing my mind right now. Okay. First thing, this zero. So here, this zero line, this is my center line. All right. I know uh, usually you want to stitch from the right out and then from the left out or center out, bottom up. Okay. Whenever possible. So if in this situation, I would want to do my D first. Stitch this D first, stitch the S, and then the sides, okay? And what I like to do, I also like to H. I'll set my angles, okay? And here, the angles, this is an important decision that you got to make, all right? Uh, really, if you're doing flats, I like my angles to be zero, right? If I'm doing patches or something like that. Uh, if I'm just doing fill stitches by themselves, I like it to be like that. But once you start adding a satin stitch, you want to kind of bring it up a tad bit. I like, I think 15 is kind of like a sweet spot. Okay. Everybody has their, their different preference on the angles that they like to use. All right. And then one last thing is my start stop. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to stop? And if you ever been in a situation where you see like a line running through your running through your fill stitches, a lot of times it could be because your stop is somewhere in the middle. Right. Your stop is somewhere in the middle. So that's where it ends. OK, so if you do have that that issue, sometimes a good thing to do is start from one side and go all the way to the next side here, all right? But what's happening here, all right? So this is why the angles are important. Let me put my uh, my dots right here. So you could see these dots, okay? These dots, these are where the needle is hitting that fabric, all right? Needle comes in, goes through the fabric, and connects with the bobbin. So it's pulling. Okay, this is when we talk about push pull. Just think of, let me, see, let me see, let me show you guys right here. All right, so a lot of stuff is happening, right? So right here, you see all these dots, especially on the sides. We're 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 kind of focused on here, on the edges. All right, so what happens is the top thread comes in, goes through the fabric, connects with the bobbin right locks in and they both pull right they're pulling that's your tension right there 
Okay, so just imagine all that, right? All that pulling, these threads, they're kind of they're they're trying to like push themselves in and get situated. Okay, so here on the sides. So here on the sides, right? These threads are pulling themselves in. So in a perfect world, it's not going to line up perfectly right here. All right. And since we have this pull in this area with that angle, this is where we get the gaps. All right. Anywhere you get these, uh, you see these dots, this is where you're most likely to get gaps because it's pulling in inward. All right. Inward. And then vice versa. Wherever we don't see gaps is where you might see the push. So here on the sides is where we get the pulling. But here going out, you might get the push, which I, I, I like to call it spillage. All right. So, so what might happen, this is how it looks on the screen. And in real life, it'll come out. All right. So it'll start looking like this which is kind of like spillage. All right, so I ran it, I ran it like this. Okay, so this is all part of the testing phase. All right, where I ran it like this on a flat. So there's three ways to do a test. Okay, so this is important information right here. The, so there's three ways to run a test, all right? There's, um, Usually what I do, I'll run something like on twill, just regular twill, because it's I have rolls and rolls and rolls of twill, and it's easy just to, right, just to, uh, I put I hook it up with a uh, with cutaway, everything. It's like in in a big format, and I'm just testing like that, right? If I got to run a test, and so it's very easy, convenient to run it on twill, okay. But in order to get a real sense of your design, you want to run it on twill. Uh, you might want to run it on uh, polo shirt type uh, material, so something that's more stretchier. All right, so you see it ran on a twill. You see it ran on a stretchy uh, polo fabric, all right? And then the third one I like to test it on is on a hat, all right? Because on a hat, now you throw more, uh, a three-dimensional situation. All right, so when I'm running uh, files, all right, that's why a lot of times you might see that a file might work on a uh, on a polo shirt, but it doesn't work on a hat, and that's because it has different types of uh, push pull occurring. All right, so let me show you some. I have some pictures of uh, some of my push pulls. Uh, All right, let me start you right here. All right, bam, this is the first. Uh, so this was my first round right here, okay? Uh, for the most part, right, it's, it, it's lining up pretty good. This is without making any adjustments on my push-pull, all right? And if, if you're working, like, on a, on a big project where you're going to do, like, a bunch, a bunch of, garments i would recommend you doing a uh, a preview such as this so where you run the the fill stitch and then you run your before you add the sand stitch right just run a, a center a center uh walking stitch or a run stitch to see how good or how much you're getting push pull from that um from that fill stitch all right so here you could kind of see on the on the San Diego, the top one, you could kind of, let me see, uh, let's, let's focus on the D right now. Okay. So if we're looking at the D on the outside of the D, you kind of see how we have uh, small gaps and it's so minimum. Sometimes it's not even, it's not even um, necessary to make any adjustments. Sometimes it's so minimum, but if you're working with a very, very thin sand stitch on top of it, then you kind of got to get the push pull pretty, pretty good. 
All right. Uh, one thing about this is on Twill. I'm doing this one. This sample is on Twill. And so it's a little bit more sturdy. It's going to hold on. That letter is going to hold a little better. All right. But if we were to go a little stretchier, uh, polo shirt tight, okay, it would probably make a big deal having that gap. So that gap would probably even open up even more. All right. Let's look at the S on the top one. Okay. On the left hand side, you can see that spillage coming out of the S. All right. So that's something we want to, we would want to um, compensate. Okay. So when we're talking about push pull compensation, uh, that's this uh, area that we would want to go. And then on the right hand side, so if you see the right hand side of the S, and actually I'm looking at the second S. Yeah, the second S in the middle. So if we're looking at the second S in the middle, you'll see that we have gaps on the right hand side. See that very that small gap? It's very minimum, all right? But once again, uh, you put it on a more stretchier fabric and that, that gap might open up even more. All right, and the FAU, the FAU, um, it's kind of hard to see with the, uh, with the, the, the blue is a little dark, but you can kind of see it. it. It did a pretty good job on making that outline. All right, just a little spillage here and there, which we might, uh, which you can correct. All right. Then we got a question here. Uh, Uh, and then um, just a quick uh, uh, information um, or announcement. All right. Um, we do have the group members of the Romero Threads group members. Uh, even right now, as I'm going to, as I'm going back to the shop, doing a lot of testing, um, a lot of the testing that I find and information that pictures that I take, I'll post it on the on the group members. It's nineteen ninety nine a month. Okay, uh, today's show the files they're they're located there, so you could uh, download them, analyze them, uh, measure them, and kind of see uh, further see what we're talking about right here. All right, just as an announcement. Um, and then this is a very good. Uh, piece of information. Thank you, TMG. All right. I recommend you purchase the same software as your favorite digitizer uses. Makes it life so much easier. All right. That's because you can actually uh, edit. You're going to have to make edits. Okay. There's no such thing as a perfect design. Somebody might uh, digitize something, test it out, see that it's good on their end. But when you get it, you might have something that's different. You might have a piece of garment that's different. And sometimes it's just a matter of making little small tweaks. All right. So it is good practice to have the same software as your digitizer. All right. All right. All right. Got my brother in the house. Makes room for A18 Van Ice. All right. He's actually going to come down and help me move. So, all right. Looking forward to that. All right. All right. Bam, bam. All right. We got, we got a jam packed house right here. All right, let's talk about making these corrections. All right. Oh, all right. We got somebody from Korea. Premier. All right. And then there's a good question right here. Roger, do you have a video on using underlay fill? We're going to talk about underlay right here. All right. It's like your lucky day today because we are going to talk about underlay. All right. Let's go back here. All right. That's going to be the next uh, topic right now. But right now I'm just talking about uh, uh, fixing or not fixing, but aligning our push pull. So I think the best, there's two ways to fix your push pull, right? There's one way where you anticipate uh, good experienced digitizers. They can already, they can already uh, anticipate where that push pull is going to happen. So they could already they could already digitize according to what's going to happen, okay? It's like they could tell the future, right? And that's because they've already seen it or they've seen something similar and and according to the angles, 
they know where that's going to push, all right, and pull. So here, H, since we have it at a 15 degrees, you know that our uh, push-pull is going to come at an angle, all right, and H, let's hide this outside. I'm, I'm focused on the letter H right now. Um, hide. Actually, let me let me bring it back, and I'll tell you why I want to bring it back. Bring back that. Um, so if I want to edit that gap right there, H. So it's it's being controlled by these nodes here. All these nodes, which are these uh, yellow uh, squares, right? If I select one, two, three, four nodes. I could pull this, all right? I'm gonna over-exaggerate so you can see it, all right? And then I'm holding control so it just stays straight. If I pull this a bit, it's gonna pull that side right there. Okay, now it's gonna account for that for that uh, gap that I have, okay? So that's very simple, easy way to account for gaps is just by um, stitching it out, looking at where the, where the run stitch is running and then Kind of fix it up here, and then here at this at this S H, we had a little bit of spillage. Uh, H here, all right. So you can grab these two nodes, all right. This is where we have that spillage, and then just push it in a tad bit. Okay, it's just like little subtle, and sometimes you have to do this when you're outside border. So let's say this border here that we're making. Let's, let's add this uh, sand stitch here. Uh, let's say we're doing it very, very thin. Like, let's say we're going 1.5, right? Even though I wouldn't want to go 1.5 just in case, okay? If you're going a 1.5 very thin sand stitch, you might, you, you're going to have to nail this one pretty, pretty close, right? The pool. But if you're going about a four, right four millimeters right i'm kind of over exaggerating over exaggerating it a bit here if you're doing a four here you might have a little bit more uh leeway all right you probably don't have to get it as perfect as possible all right but there's going to be times where you're going to have to get the push pull perfect or else you're going to start seeing gaps all right and um uh, We'll talk about the underlay, okay? So before moving forward, a lot of times you might see your design, like on screen, it might look like this. You might tell yourself like, why is my design hall? It looks like it's all off, right? That's just the digitizer is accounting for that push pull. So usually, especially if you have fill stitches or you have stitches connecting to each other, um, usually it shouldn't look picture perfect. It should look all kind of distorted on the screen. And then when you stitch it out, it comes out, you know, everything is lined up. All right. Um, let's talk about uh, underlay. Okay. So a lot of times you're getting, you get your, you get your files distorted because you have the push pull uh, letters going one way, right. Um, or your designs going one way, it's going all over the place. And one way to limit that is let me make a new design right here. Let's grab this D as our example right here. Copy. So we could just focus on here. All right. So we want to go to our underlay. All right. Let's say we don't have any. Let's say we don't have any underlay. And then we we replay this. That was a little fast right there. All right. So if we were just to let it run like this, or let me go a little faster. If we were to let it go run like this, there's really no, there's really no foundation happening. So this D in reality, it's, it's moving in different locations gradually. Okay. Gradually. So all that push pull, you see that? As it's going up, it's pushing, pulling, pulling, pulling on the sides, and it's 
by the time it's said and done, this D is all distorted. Like it doesn't, it might not even look like a D. All right. So what we want to do, okay, what we want to do, let's hide this right here. We want to put a foundation. All right. We want to make a foundation on this D, of course, our underlay. And then the big question is, how much underlay do I need? That's always the number one question. And I wish there was an answer where it's like, hey, um, like recipe, right? Hey, use this. If you're in this situation, use this, okay? But uh, it's it's a variable because it depends what it depends what garment you're doing, the size, all right? There's there's probably like 10, 10 if somebody were to ask me that question, right? If it's just out of the blue, hey, uh, I'm doing the letter D, how much, how much, or what underlay should I use, right? The question is, how big is that letter D, right? If it's right here, we're doing it two inches in height. It's pretty big, right? For embroidery, that's pretty big, especially for a hat, pretty big. Um, next thing is, what material are you stitching it on? Uh, the more stretchy something is, the more underlay you want, all right? Because, um, let me show you here. Let's put one round of underlay here. All right, let's 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 start with an edge run. All right, let's start with an edge run. With something simple as putting an edge run. All right, this is the underlay right here. It's gonna start stitching. At the very minimum, it just made like a boundary, okay? It made a boundary for this D. Now, it's not gonna, it's gonna still move, but it's not gonna move tremendously, all right? This still might not be enough, all right? But it's something, it's it's better than nothing, all right? At the very minimum, you're gonna keep it in a certain uh, location. You're gonna hold it to a certain location, okay? And let's switch this up. Let's say we wanna just go with uh, traditionally, all right, normally I would go with a tatami here. Actually, tatami, all right, and then a tatami. And then you could see here it says 90 degrees. So if I'm going, um, if I'm going uh, 15 degrees, it's gonna adjust it, it's gonna offset it 90 degrees, all right? So, so this is my uh, underlay. And it's about to create a foundation, right? So even before it starts stitching, this is my base now, okay? Now you gotta tell yourself, is this enough to hold my stitch in place? All right, usually I like to, usually my recipe is a tatami with a edge run, all right? This is my, um, this is my go-to, all right? So go here and then make that border. Once it kind of pushed everything out, now it makes that border, all right? So now we have, this is kind of template, right? But in my situation here, okay, sometimes with a hat, if you're doing a hat fill, uh, hats, they like to move around and they don't like to sit still. So we get some movement, all right? In that situation, if you have something that's moving, uh, tatami, all right? I wanna put a double tatami, all right? But I'm gonna switch it up in a bit, all right? Let me just show you what's gonna happen right here. It's gonna do a tatami going one side, and then it's gonna crisscross, all right? This is the second tatami coming through. It's gonna crisscross, now we're getting some good underlay right here, right before it starts, and now it's gonna start stitching. So you can see that crisscross. But let me switch it up a tad bit. What I like to do, instead of using a double tatami, right? It seems like it's the same thing, but I've noticed that it's not. I put a tatami here, and then I put a tatami again down here. 135 because here I can actually change the angles of that second tatami all right so let me show you what happens here this to me this is the if you're trying to go maximum 
amount of uh, underlay, uh, maximum and efficient um, uh, amount of underlay. This this is my go-to one right here. So here it crisscrossed, but now it's crisscrossing at a different angle than the double tatami. So I have control of that second tatami. All right. And then once it does the, the actual stitch, all right. You can see that nothing is none of the none of the tatami stitches are running at the same angle, all right? So they're all crisscrossing each other, and then this final one comes down here. Now the good thing about running, um, you could see here we have it, it. It could be massive amount of underlay, all right? It could be, but since we have more underlay, we can actually drop our density. All right, because we're, we're pretty heavy down in the bottom. And this is where you kind of got to get a feel for how much uh, density you need. All right. Space. Fails, 40. Yeah, so we could go. Usually it's at 38, or some people like to use 33 as their uh, density. All right, here, 40, you could probably even go 42, all right? Maybe even a little higher, 44 as a density, all right? Tatami, tatami, all right. So let's go back here, and we could just do all of our densities. Bam, tatami. And... There's no such thing as the right answer. Like people, you could do you could do something completely different. And the main thing is to try to keep your uh, stitches low count and not heavy. So if you feel like you're getting heavy stitches because of the, the underlay, just line up your density. All right, so 40. All right, bam, bam. All right, now let's see the picture. Let me show you the picture of what happens. All right, so here, this was round one, and then I made the adjustments. I make the adjustments so it could be perfectly lined up, right? It's probably like at, I would say at 94% perfect here, like lined up. We could do a little bit of changes. So, we go here, this is round two, all right? Actually, let me see, difference, yeah. I think on this size, this one here, the height was a little smaller and this is when I picked up the height a bit. All right, now, now our, uh, our fill stitches and our run stitches they're like, I would say like at 97% perfectly lined up. Okay. You could always, you can always make something better. You could always line something out, something even more. All right. Um, now, this is on a fill, this is on a flat surface, right? Flat twill. So, Remember, we always have to try, or you don't always have to, but it's good practice to um, sample on three types of garment. So this is the twill you want to do on a stretchy polo shirt type fabric. And then if you really want to, on a hat. Now, this same file, okay, this same file, we might think it's good, good to go. Let's throw it on a hat. Let's see what happens, all right? So this next picture that I have, this is me throwing it on a hat and let's see what happens. All right, FAU. All right, you can see uh, we lose a little bit of the registration. It ain't too bad. All right, it ain't too bad. We can always uh, adjust stuff. We don't have too much spillage. We don't have too much gapping. If we have any gapping, it's just little subtle changes of our nodes. All right, so you could kind of like mentally see where you could change the nodes. All right, this is this design, all right? I think every design kind of has a mind of its own. This one wasn't too bad. The next one, all right, it's a whole different story. So when I did the San Diego, 
All right, bam, look at that. All right, we lost registration right here, especially that D. Okay, I think every other letter, the S, the S, that's all right, and the U was all right, but that D, okay, something about this D, and that was actually the first letter that I stitched out. Okay, everything else is lining up good, but that D is not lining up. Okay, so in that situation, right? It's good on a it's good on a flat twill, but when we throw it on a hat, it does not want to does not want to line up. So in that situation, all right. Once again, okay. In th in that situation, I would I would now save it. Like if I'm doing a if I'm doing a uh, a design for a customer, I would label it. Uh, this design and put for flat twill. And then as I'm making this change, I would put um, design for hat. Okay, so H, now we need more, All right? So I'm just gonna select those. And then with the right hand, there's different ways to do it. You could just put the right arrow key and just drag it to the side a bit and compensate for that gap that just happened. And then we also had that gap right here on the sides. So we could pull this nodes, all right, pull it in a bit. So if you were to receive this file and you're looking at it, you would have been like, wow, this looks like it's way off, right? But once it stitches out, it'll, it'll come back in. All right, and then let's go back to the picture. All right, and then a uh, big shout out to my wife because she's the one that was uh, receiving the file, sampling them out, taking a picture for me, and then sending them back, all right? And then I would make like one subtle change. I'd be like, okay, you know, stitch this one out. And she would say, hey, it's like the same design. I was like, yeah, I know, I'm just testing something out. All right, so big shout out to my wife for uh, doing these tests back home. She's the one doing production back home. I'm kind of just doing the designs here on this side of town. All right. So once we um, make those subtle changes, all right, actually, um, so now once we line it up, okay, I add the sand stitch. So let me go ahead and make that sand stitch. I actually don't. I don't do the second test because now I know everything's good. Now I just have to push this to the right a bit, okay? So now that I have my items good to go, all right, oops, not this one, this one right here, oh. All right, so now, now I select my run stitches and then, oh, convert them to my sand stitches. All right, and then right here, uh, sand stitches, underlay, edge run, 45 zigzag. You could put a double zigzag if you want them to be nice and sharp, All right? The only thing, if you're gonna put, a, if you're gonna, um, if you're gonna pile on the underlay, Okay, good practice. Is to uh, bring down the density. So, bringing down the density, it's like opposite. Bringing down the density equals raising up the spacing. So, you could put 40 or 42, okay, just to get that boldness. All right, bam. And this one here, you can test out different sizes. So uh, I know we had looked at a uh, at a 2.5 density. I'm not a density. 2.5 millimeter sand stitch. It, it looked too thin, so we're like, hey, you know what? Let's go three. Uh, good thing about a three millimeter, you get a little bit more leeway with the with the gapping. Okay, so it's a little bit more wiggle room. So the, the, the thinner and the smaller the, the, the sand stitch, the more precise you have to be with your fill stitch push-pull, 
All right. So let's look at the. Uh, so here, the FAU. Okay. Um, let's look at this SD real quick. All right, so the SD. So here, uh, you can also see when it's stitching out and you're looking at the underlay, the black underlay. You can see if your uh, if your adjustments lined up on that D. Okay, so if you do if you do make um, some changes, you could see it during the underlay of the sand stitch. All right, so now we look at it. You can kind of see. Uh, the D, everything lines up. That's a three millimeter. I think that's a sweet spot for this type of design. So here we have uh, five inches wide. We did try a uh, four inch, 4.5 inch, and it looked pretty small. So this one here, all right, I think it's a very sweet spot. Um, and these are just good. So I like to do these uh, just to give customers uh, a sense of reference point. So, cause if you tell them, Hey, how big do you want your designs? They're going to, for some reason, they're going to say, I want the biggest possible. Right. But sometimes the biggest possible, like, right. Like, why would you even go want to go seven, eight inches wide? That's probably too big. Okay. So if you give them a reference point, if you show them, the best thing to do is to show them how big a five inch wide looks like. Okay. Cause sometimes they might think, Oh, that, no, we want it bigger. Okay. But you're like, hold on, you're going too big now. Okay. So this is, it's all being used for reference. And uh, two inches height, I think is also a sweet spot to go for this type of design. Okay. So you can already come up with like a thousand different um, industries that use, uh, that use this type of lettering, right? For example, like, let's say like fire departments, right? You can do all day fire departments, you can do sports, um, right? Any type of sports, anything that's uh, organizational where they have abbreviations, okay? I like this one here. So this one, I, I think four letters and three letters is like the sweet spot. So for three letters, okay, the letters, the the each letter could get a little wider too. So you can see how it's coming out. I think three letters is the actual sweet spot. And four letters is like the maximum you want to go. I don't know if I would want to go more than four letters, like five, six, seven. Now your, your text is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. But I think this one here, especially this one. So maybe for like a fraternity or any type of, of anything that has, you know, three letters. I think that's perfect. Perfect. All right. So let me see. Bam. Uh, one thing that I want to show you here. Let's look at this SDSU. All right, the first SD, so on the left-hand side, notice that my stitch angles are running at a 15 degree, all right? You could kind of visualize it. You could see it there, 15 degrees. And then my SU, I switch up the angles. So now I'm actually at a 135 degree, and I'll show you right now in the software what I mean. All right, because I want I want my thread to push outward. Okay, I want that. I want the left side, the SD, as I'm starting from the right hand side. I want that thread to push outward, and then the same thing with the SU. I'm at a 135 degrees, so that so that thread could push outward. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about right here. All right, let's hide the sand stitches. Actually, I got my design right here. All right, let me play this right here. All right, let me play this. All right, let me do a replay of what just happened, all right? So I want to start with the letter D, right? I want to start in the center, somewhere in the center. It doesn't matter if you start right or left, all right? So I'm going to put that um, my underlay here, and then I'm putting that double to Tommy stitch to crisscross then my stitch. All right. So here's where I'm talking about. I want my, I want to start here on the bottom, right. And walk and work my way all the way out to this side. 
here. All right, so then that's why my angles are set at that because that's just a, a, a way to push outward with my angles. All right, so that way I'm anticipating to end on this side. Now I'm going to go on the other side, on the right-hand side, okay, because I'm just kind of pushing this hat outward. Now on this S, since, since it's on the right-hand side, I want to kind of do the opposite of it, all right? I want to push outward, all right? So see how this angle now is mirrored with this one. So it's a 135 degree. Or not 135, uh, 165, okay? Uh, and then see how it's pushing outward there, all right? So that way it pushes out. And the question is, is this is this mandatory for it to happen like this? No, nothing is mandatory, but the more it, the more little small details you put into the design, the the less of something of loss of registration happening. All right. So you want to have every little edge an advantage over your design. So this way you can see how it's pushing outward. It's gonna push outward and then end out here. Same thing here, since this is on the right-hand side, this side starts up there and then it's gonna push outward out here. All right. Now it's gonna do the, see right here. It looks all crazy on the screen, but when we stitch it out, it all lines up because we had that, that gap going on. All right, bam. So here I have an edge run with a double zigzag underlay. All right, and that's just so I can get a nice clean sand stitch out. All right, so I'm starting in the middle, same thing here. And there's always the debate. Do we have to do uh, the full letter first, such as, I'll show you right now. Should we go, so the way I'm doing it, I'm doing all the red first, and then I'm doing all the black. But there's always a discussion, should I go the letter D? So right after the D, put the sand stitches out here. Then after the S, put that S right here. So it looks like this. Bam. And then if we play it, okay, like what is the better way to do it? Should it be, let's do the D completely so we don't lose any registration and then do the black side here. I think if I was, if I was doing a thinner sand stitch, so right here I'm doing three millimeters, if I was doing two millimeters, I might do it like this, this, this way here. Okay. Because you could, the hat is always pulling. So you could be pulling a little bit. It's just the only thing you're going to do is add um, color changes. All right. It's just, you know, a couple extra minutes to the design. All right. But if you do find yourself situations where you're like in a very tight, detailed design, all right, you might want to do that area first and then move on to the next one. All right, so let me see. Bam, bam. And then here. All right, and then I always like to finish my, my, my fill stitches, start one side and end the other side. All right, bam. All right, now let's just look at this one, FAU. All right, bam, bam. Um, here, the, this corner looked a little wonky to me. All right, uh, I was ready to change it and I said, hey, you know what? Let's just see how it looks. All right, and then this is how it ended up looking. I think it was good. It's good enough to, uh, all right, you can see that corner. Still looks clean, it still looks sharp. All right, so I kept it. But if there's certain corners that you don't like, you could always, you know, 
you always have the ability to change it. All right, let me play this one. Uh, same thing, but now we have three letters. So this A, I just chose, you know, it doesn't really matter what the angle is. Um, just because it's in the middle. I still kept it at a 15 degree just to keep it very basic. So same settings. Um, and let me see, bam. And then I'll tell you the density that I use. So here, same thing, I'm pushing outward. I want my design to push outward of the hat. Because sometimes if you're pushing inward, you could like the, the, the hat could start looking like getting sandwiched in certain areas. That's why you might have some hats kind of like bulge in if, if you kind of go from the outside in. So same thing here. All right. And then let's check our densities. All right. So since I added double tatami, all right. I'm good at a 42 spacing. So usually if I'm just using the traditional um, underlay, I'll be at a 38.38 millimeters. Here, I'm good at 42. And if you want to continue experimenting, you could always keep on checking it and seeing where's the breaking point. Where's that point where you start seeing through, all right? So if I were to be doing a bunch of these hats, I would see how does it look at 45, all right? And then sometimes little subtle changes, like let's say we we change this to a 45 all right from a 42 to a 45 right now it's showing uh we have total stitches we have 13,939 okay if we change this to a 45.45 density 139 uh brings it down to a 135 all right so that we would save 400 stitches all right so even though it's a subtle change it still brings down the stitch count a tad bit, all right, 400 stitches, all right? If you're doing a big project, you know, it could play a role, all right, but for the most part, and that would just be a matter of testing. All right, let me see. All right, so the main thing that I wanted to highlight today was this, was this part right here, okay? Was this here. Something looks perfect here. On flat twill, right? It's like, okay, I got the design. It's good to go. Let's throw it on a hat. Okay. But then something's not lining up. All right. And it's not lining up because the hat, right? The hat is doing something funky and it's not lining up right here. All right. Of course, you always want to make sure that the hat uh, is not getting, is not hooking onto something or you don't have any, nothing is obstructing the hat. So a lot of times you could, that could happen also, the hat's getting stuck on something and then it, you're losing registration like that. Or another, another reason why you, you could uh, lose registration is you don't have uh, correct backing. Some people say that they don't use backing on their hats. I always use backing on hats because it's just good practice and it keeps everything consistent. So if you know that your, your pride, your, your hat or your uh, garments not being obstructed, you have correct amount of uh, backing, then you could kind of see your design be like, hey, I might have to change some of the nodes. All right, everything else lined it up good. And then the final stitch out lined up good. So I know it was this part of the D that was kind of uh, pulling, pulling in too much in this area right here. It could also be, we are close to the, we are close to the, to the center line and sometimes the center line it, it likes to do crazy stuff down in the center all right so you always want to if you're looking at your design stitch out you will, you definitely want to look when it's getting into the center portion of your designs all right and then you see i got a question right here we got somebody from greece smart stickers from greece all right. Last time I was in Greece, what year was it? 2014? Yeah, I was in Crete, the island of Crete. All right. Um, Roger. So is it better to go with a higher underlay and a lower density? Yeah. So if you do, if you do bump up the, the underlay, 
you want to bring down the density about uh, you want to or else it's going to be a overload of stitches so yes more um that's why a lot of times when you're doing puff with puff you 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 take off pretty much all the underlay and you're going to increase the density but here it's the opposite since we're putting more underlay more foundation you need less thread all right for the most part all right all right bam bam hey boricua how you doing all right um juan why did you start and end on the outside why did you start and end outside the design um so when i start when i when i when i start i want to start on one corner and end on the next one so the thread is is uh, even not evenly but gradually pushing outward what you don't want is to start on one side it stops here and then it, it goes out to the end point and then push itself in because then you could sandwich that hat okay or your design or your garment all right um all right so uh i'm still gonna i'm 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 still gonna push more on this. I know um, gaps, push pull, settings, density, underlay, um, how much underlay, okay? I'm gonna definitely, that's gonna be like my big thing this month is to um, push more and dive more into it, okay? Uh, I did dive pretty deep into this one uh, with the testing, okay? But I wanna push even further uh, for next month. I, I want to focus, I think a good example is doing flags. Uh, a lot of times flags, you have a lot of designs, uh, a lot of different colors interacting with each other. And that's where we can get a lot of um, push pull and loss of registration. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this information that I, that I gathered here and pile that with working with flags. All right, so I think I'm going to put myself a goal of doing all 50 states and a bunch of countries. All right, a bunch, a bunch of countries of uh, flags. And I'm going to save that one for our next live embroidery show. All right, so definitely um, we're, it's kind of it's going to be like a continuation with this. So everything that we learned today, we're going to take it to the next one also. All right. And then uh, again, if you are a channel member, I'm going to be throwing a lot of that information onto the channel page. All right. I do want to I do want to thank everybody here on the live. All right. You make you make this channel 100 times better. Um, YouTube has uh, labeled this channel as an educational channel, which, you know, that's that was like the main goal when I started this channel was uh, the education of embroidery and taking uh, education to that next level. All right, so um, we're doing pretty good with that. And I definitely wanna, I, I definitely want to uh, thank channel members, right? Because uh, keeping, we get to offset a lot of the cost of running this channel, all right? Is offset with the channel members. And also if I have to, if I have to um, test anything, right? If I have to test uh, items on a hat or anything, I don't even have to second guess it, right? Because uh, a lot of the funds that are, a lot of the funds that are coming in, all right, it gets it gets put back into the class, so we could continue learning, continue testing, and actually have actual sew outs and actual proof. Because if you're trying to learn embroidery just by theory only, okay, you're not gonna really learn anything. You actually have to learn it, apply it, and stitch it out because just by looking at something and somebody telling you that this is the theory, all right, you're not going to really see the behind the scenes of what actually happens. Like you've seen here, just when I thought everything was lined up, we put it on a hat and that hat said, nope, continue fixing your design, all right? So sometimes that's really what it takes is to do uh, – more testing, more testing, more testing. So when something doesn't work, you kind of have an idea why it doesn't work, all right? It's not like something caught you off guard. And what usually happens, somebody's struggling with their design, and it's always 
you know, you'll see it in every group, right? You somebody's asking for help, and you always get the the same response. You get uh, somebody will say, "Oh, just raise the density, right? Oh, just oh, you don't have enough density." But there's more behind the scenes of what's happening. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, adjusting your underlay or changing it at a, at a different angle. And then probably the fifth step might be to change your density. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, changing nodes. All right. So you've seen how when I change kind of like the, the, the nodes, how everything kind of lines up back to normal. All right. Sometimes a perfect design on one garment might require little small changes, subtle changes, something else. All right. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for stopping by, for hanging out. All right. Um, definitely, definitely going to take all the information that we're learning, taking it to the next level, right? Every month, we just take it to that next level. All right. Next month, I'll be live embroidery. I'll be at the shop. The last day at the shop, I'll be back in Illinois. So I'm definitely going to be super pumped for that one. Make sure you put that on the calendar. And once again, it's going to be on April 29th. All right, April 29th, we're going live. We're going to have uh, both embroider machines going on. All right, so we're going to do live hooping, live uh, stitching, live digitizing, and hopefully we could fit that in uh, maybe two hours. But if we go four or five hours, I mean, it's all good. All right, it's all good. All right, see everybody. Go San Diego. I'm going for San Diego today. All right, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.